New Zealand is a modern, thriving country known for its spectacular landscape. Much of that landscape is covered with farm animals. So on this farm, there's just under 4,000 ewes and just under 400 cows running on it. The animals are outside all the time. It's free range, it's open, it's healthy. Agriculture doesn't just have a long history here in New Zealand. Today, it's a thriving primary industry. In recent decades, this country has had its share of hard times. Many lost their livelihood. The people, animals, the land and waterways all suffered. Uh, and it just, it, it ruined some lives. And there was some real pain out there. And some real pain and some real hurt and some real anger. You know, I had some good personal friends lose everything they had through those times, and it was bloody hard. The country was in crisis, and it was clear that something drastic had to be done. New Zealanders, affectionately called Kiwis, took the painful steps required to stop the downward spiral, and bold reforms were voted in. When you stand here on this land, you cannot help but marvel at the natural beauty. It's truly astonishing. It's hard to imagine that 30 years ago, New Zealand was on the brink of economic downfall. I'm Joan Norberg, and I'm here in this beautiful land to share the story about how the Kiwis took the bull by the horns, reformed their country, and became genuine trailblazers for the world. New Zealand is a former British colony, and the UK became their biggest trade partner. By the 1950s, people here enjoyed some of the highest incomes in the world. New Zealand was a key agricultural provider for the British Empire, and the UK was by far New Zealand's main market. The Cashmore Ranch lies on the North Island of New Zealand. Bill Cashmore's family has worked this land for generations. Yeah, so this property uh, is just under 5,000 acres. Our income's around 40% from sheep, 15% from wool, and the rest from cattle. I've got two boys, Robert, is managing the home farm operation here. New Zealand is an island of immigrants, where impoverished labourers took great risks in the hopes of a better life. Like many, Bill Cashmore's family made the long journey from England with a dream of owning land and new opportunities. So William Cashmore was the first member of our family to come here, and that man was my great-grandfather. So he rode in here as a young man. No road, no nothing. They felled and milled timber to grow a new nation. And then they started grazing stock. And as they just, they got bigger and bigger. Bill grew up working the farm. And in his late 20s, met his wife-to-be. I didn't come from a farming background. I came from a farming town. I've been here 34 years and, um, yeah. Can't get it to leave. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> when Bill and his wife took over the farm, New Zealand's primary trading partner was still the United Kingdom. So we used to sell everything to the UK back in the day, you know. My father and grandfather say everything went to England. But in the 1970s, this all changed when the UK became part of the European Economic Community. This meant that overnight, New Zealand lost their favoured trading status with England. In response, the New Zealand government tried to stabilize the economy with subsidies for farmers. But what we did have was guaranteed prices we'd receive for things by the government. And it got to the point that a third or more of our income was being supplied from central government. So let me tell you about what I call the skinny sheep policy, where farmers were given a dollar a sheep, I think it was from memory, or 50 cents or something, and it was nuts, because the more you ran, the more money you got paid to do so. 
but it didn't mean, mean that the quality you, you were producing was any better. Or was it good for the environment having overstocking on, on, on marginal land? No, it wasn't. By the early 1980s, it was clear to most farmers that the subsidy program wasn't working in their best interests. In 1984, a new government was elected that dramatically reformed the economy of the country. Virtually overnight, all subsidies were removed. The farmers supported this, but only if trade restrictions were removed at the same time. This way, the cost of farm equipment would drop and farmers would have access to world markets as well. All subsidies for agriculture were removed. So our income dropped 30% overnight, bang. Changes for New Zealand farmers happened fast and hit hard. Interest rates increased, property values dropped, subsidies were eliminated cold turkey. These were necessary changes, but that didn't make it any easier for farmers like Bill. It was happening so fast that you could hardly get used to one before the next one was rolled out at you. Those were bloody tough days. You were lean, mean, but determined. For most, the decision was clear. Adapt to the new economic reality or lose the farm. And then things started to improve. So we've done a combination of things. We've used smart genetics. We've used better management practices. The same number of ewes, same number of cows, but they're producing 30 to 50% more. Across New Zealand, Farmers who managed to hang on to their land were able to compete in the international market as never before. Well, we didn't have a choice. New Zealand's a little wee country at the bottom of the world. And we have to compete by selling beef to the United States, lamb to Britain and Europe and China and wool everywhere and fruit and vegetables and everything else we do. We've got to ship it there and still sell it cheaper than what you can do it. So we have to compete. There is no way I'd ever go back to anything that's got government involvement in it. That's one thing I've learned is that individuals, given the right incentives and the right signals from the politicians, will deliver. So let people make their own individual choices. Let them work hard, make those sacrifices to achieve the things they want for themselves, for their family, and for their, their, their communities. And that's what delivers. Um, you try and spread the benefits out everywhere, you get a very thin smear that doesn't achieve much. You know, agriculture and farming and working and business is in our blood in this family, it's in our genes. And a long way it continues.